Hi, grace and peace from God our Father through our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill, and it's good to be with you today as we dwell in God's Word. Today is Tuesday, and it's June 23rd, and I'm starting uh, broadcasting this a little bit later because we had a funeral for one of our dear members earlier today, uh, but it's good to be with you uh, at this time. Today I'd love for us to look at 1 Peter chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 7 through 11. Let us turn to God's Word. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him be glory, uh, belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So what did you hear when this passage was read? Um, what jumped out at you? I heard a couple of things, and the first was just simply be hospitable without complaining. Um, and how hard that is to do sometimes, to be hospitable without complaining. And secondly, I heard some wonderful words that talks about not to necessarily compare ourselves to others, but whatever knack we have, whatever gift we have, that's what God wants us to use to shine the light of Christ in the world, to be yourself and to make a difference. And we glorify God when we are simply who we are to help others in the world but be hospitable without complaining. For some reason, there is a, a song that jumped into my head as I'm listening to this, and it's, um, I actually had to look it up a little bit earlier, but it's Smile. Um, smile, though your heart is breaking, smile. And it's a song that I found out was composed by Charlie Chaplin, and for, you know, he was the big silent uh, movie person, uh, and it had no lyrics actually at first, and it was a song based on an instrumental theme that was used in his 1936 movie, Modern Times. Somebody heard the wonderful tune and put words to it, and it wasn't until 1954 that it was given a title and words. And later, I think I've heard it uh, sung by several artists, but I can remember Nat King Cole singing it, or Jimmy Durante. Um, or Michael Jackson loved this song. Um, smile. Be hospitable. I've heard that it's hard to, to sing something depressing with a banjo. Uh, I used to love, when I was in high school even, listen to Steve Martin when he was a stand-up comedian. And he used to sing like some funny phrases on his banjo. And he said, see, it doesn't sound the same when you say it on a banjo that you just couldn't play something depressing. It had such a a positive uh, tune to it. And I've also been told that if you smile while you're talking on the phone, um, it adds lift to your mood and you convey a more positive note. So try that next time you're on the phone before somebody answers, just just big grin on your face and see if that doesn't help you talk differently. Um, and I know I've experienced the effects of what mood I'm in and how I present myself to somebody. You know, if I'm in a sad mood or a bad mood, it spills over into the conversation. Uh, if I'm in a happy or a joyful mood, same thing. Um, and sometimes people will even say, boy, you sure are in a, a good mood today. People, people know. Um, people know kind of what you're thinking by how you convey yourself. Um, the old term is countenance, the countenance you have. There's a favorite song we sing at our preschool and during chapel time that uh, if you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, um, clap your hands or say amen. Um, and that's a song that reminds us about if you're happy, then let your face know it and smile. And so there's this phrase that I have used over the years that helps me think about this. It's perception yields behavior, yields destiny. So it's how I think affects how I behave and how I behave will 
get me into a certain direction. And think about that. Um, think about something sad for a minute. It does kind of bring you down. Think about something extremely happy for a minute. It'll bring you up or exciting or hopeful. Today, um, though we were at the graveside of someone who had died in our congregation, there were times where when we brought up a phrase that they had said or a memory that was particularly full of good thought, uh, some people would smile. Smile during a funeral, during a time of death, because it was a reminder of the life that that person brought. So it does affect our perception, affects our behavior, affects our de destiny. Be hospitable without complaining, is what I heard from First Peter today. Let God's strength and gift of life give you hope so that you feel encouraged in your life, that you feel outgoing, that you feel outgiving toward others when you're around them. When I read about uh, First Peter, you know, this is one of uh, the letters that's been called the most hope-filled book in the New Testament because its purpose is to encourage Christian converts that were living in the midst of kind of a tough time, a hostile society. And it said it did this because it emphasized their new life because of the risen Christ. They have now been saved through Christ. And so they have something to be hopeful about. Um, and so they said in, in a sense that Christ was their living hope. And that was what they needed to embrace during this difficult time. And perhaps the same is there for us as well. Um, you know, throughout the letter, even Jesus Christ's life and especially his suffering is used as an example of how they are to understand and bear their sufferings as they seek to do God's will. That Jesus gave us an example to embrace life and be with people who are in need, but to do so in a way that you're providing a sense of presence and comfort. Um, and so believers who hear this, this letter have reason for hope, even in times of apparent hopelessness or even persecution, because Christ has been raised and Christ is alive in them. And God is at work in the world. And look for that instead of the other things that are there. So smile. The light of Christ is your hope. I hope that's something that you can dwell on today and hear uh, as you know, God is with you wherever you go. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we're so grateful for your gift of word and for this witness today from the letter of First Peter that reminds us to have a sense of hospitality about ourselves because of the living hope we have in Christ in us. Amen. God's peace. Take care, and we'll hope to see you soon.